días eh, vamos a hacer la presentación de mis inglés y de esto que luego también hará una breve exposición en inglés sobre Change to Do. English now. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Ambassador of Trinidad and Tobago to Spain, Ambassador uh, Aristegui, uh, thank you all very much for coming to this uh, to this presentation of, of Trinidad and Tobago. I think it's the first time we have an activity. Well, at least the first time we have a minister, a minister of foreign affairs of Trinidad and Tobago in, in Spain. So it's uh, it's an honor to introduce uh, uh, Honorable Minister uh, Winston Dukeran. Minister Dukeran has a solid education and experience in economics. He earned a degree in economics from the University of Manitoba and a master's degree at London School of Economics. He has worked as a professor at West Indies University, teaching economics for 15 years. He has served as minister in different departments and even as acting prime minister. He also worked as a senior economist at the CEPAL and has been a member of the Inter-American Development Bank Executive Council. Mr. Dukeran also served as governor of the Caribbean Development Bank and between 1997 and 2002, he served as governor Governor of Trinidad and Tobago Central Bank. In May 2010, he was appointed as Minister of Finance, and then in June 2012, Minister of Foreign Affairs. As you can see, the Honorable Mr. Dukran holds a long record of service to his nation. The Spanish government attaches a big importance to this visit. It is, as I said before, the first time a minister from Trinidad and Tobago comes to Spain in a bilateral visit. Spain established diplomatic relations with Trinidad and Tobago in 1966. Trinidad and Tobago's growing prominence and expansion of our political and economic interests led us to open an embassy in 2006. Subsequently, their majesties, the King and Queen of Spain, undertook a state visit to uh, Trinidad and Tobago in February 2009. Since then, we have been consolidating a robust network of political and economic interest and of technical cooperation. Spain has been Trinidad and Tobago's commercial partner and an ally before the European Union and a bridge to Latin America. The expansion of the agenda, of the bilateral agenda, is also the fruit of political will, aiming at integrating the whole Caribbean region, not only the Spanish-speaking Caribbean countries, in our foreign policy. As a result, Spain has excellent relations with Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, which are the three countries of the CARICOM that, uh, in, with, in where we have embassies. And we can say proudly that Spain has a comprehensive American foreign policy and not only a Latin American one. In that framework, we place a great importance in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is a young democracy, but a solid one. Trinidad and Tobago celebrated recently the uh, 14th anniversary of its independence. And Trinidad and Tobago is a stable nation and has a leading regional role in the Caribbean. From the economic perspective, it has become a high income and highly developed country. Its income per capita is similar to, the, to Portugal and higher than those of other EU partners. Trinidad and Tobago offers a business environment that can be very attractive to Spanish investors. Hence, we must aspire to strengthen our economic and commercial ties. Finally, it is now my honor to give the floor to the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Dukera, who will talk about his country and the opportunity it offers to businessmen and media, think tanks, etc. Honor, Honorable Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your very warm introduction. And thank you all for being here this morning to share some thoughts and a special thanks to my friend, Mr. Mukim. The, the, who was a former ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago, and a lot of the foundation work that has been laid there the last few years. I now have the privilege with our ambassador designate to work with. Let me start in these few remarks by saying that Trinidad and Tobago has a very rich Spanish heritage. Before the British became the power 
in Trinidad and Tobago, the Spanish had had a long reign. And if you come to Trinidad and Tobago today, you will see so much evidence in our architecture, in the names of our street, perhaps even in our food and in our cultural expressions, the Spanish tradition. So coming here as Foreign Minister for Trinidad and Tobago to Madrid, Spain, <coughs> is a special moment for me and for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The relationship between our two countries was put together for the first time in an English translation which was spearheaded by His Excellency, Joe Hokim. And it produced a book which I just brought for your attention because it was done by the Spanish Embassy in association with a number of interests in Trinidad to be called Spanish Trinidad. It gives the history of that period between Trinidad and Tobago and Spain, where we share a historical space together. Today, we have come at a different juncture, at a different time. And now, we are in a period of fundamental changes that have taken place in the global diplomatic world. So it is appropriate that I did agree on the invitation of the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs to be here, to start a different conversation, to open new doors of collaboration and cooperation, and at the same time, to cement the historical ties between our two countries. Indeed, the capital of Trinidad and Tobago is called Port of Spain. And therefore, that word itself is but a reflection of the relationship between us in the century before. So we are a small Spain, so to speak, in the Caribbean region. It is in that historical context that today, cementing this relationship and developing the pillars for future collaboration is why I have the opportunity to be in this wonderful edifice, a palace that is already welcoming. And as my friend said to me, it's a real palace because the story is there are a lot of ghosts in the palace. But it is wonderful to be here and to be in this audience under your very distinguished presence here today, Your Excellency. That history of which I speak about is a history that in today's world have been reflected in many different ways. And may I start as Minister of Foreign Affairs by just sharing with you what are some of the fundamental precepts upon which we have built our foreign policy in terms of our multilateral affairs. In this respect, our international agenda within recent times have been predicated on three main areas, two of which your government has given strong support for. Firstly, we have been embarking on a role to establish standards for international justice, criminal justice. It's something we started some years ago when we placed on the world agenda the concept of the establishment of an international criminal court. A former prime minister of our country, A.N.R. Robinson, had a very distinguished contribution in putting this on the agenda with others. And today, it has become a reality and is an important instrument for the promotion of the standards that are required in the international criminal justice for the preservation of peace 
and for the promotion of justice. The second area, and more recently, that we have been engaged in has to do with the question of the small arms and ammunition as an instrument of warfare in some places and the promotion of instability in other places. And therefore, the ATT, as it is called, the Arms Trade Treaty that was recently adopted in the United Nations by a number of countries and in fact signed by many, still to be ratified by others, has been a hallmark achievement in which we in Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean consider it a great honor to have been spearheaded with many other countries that particular effort. For us in the region, small arms and ammunition as our Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa said when she piloted this at the United Nations, is really the, the instruments of mass destruction. And we are very grateful for the tremendous support that was given to us by the government and the people of Spain in these two ventures. You have played an important role in supporting us as a country here in Europe and therefore provided the necessary international support for our own quest to promote the right standards in the international criminal justice system. More recently, we have embarked on a role to develop what we call the rights of children. And we are attempting to place that on the national agenda in order to be able to, great, to create greater focus on, a, on this issue globally and, of course, regionally. To some extent, therefore, our own foreign postures have been linked to these particular trust on the global arena. But we have also placed great emphasis on the issue of women and their participation in many aspects of global diplomacy. And in that respect, we also piloted, with your support, motions in the United Nations for the purposes of increasing the participation of women in the non-proliferation treaties, and also focus on the health issues on non-communicable diseases. I say that if only to establish the parameters of our own international dimension, which is to create peace and security, which is to support all countries that do support in different forums this whole question of peace and security by focusing as a small country on creating a special profile on these particular issues. It is against that kind of background that I'm here today to really introduce to you Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago, two island states, part of the wider Caribbean, part of the Caribbean community, as it is called, which brings about, brings together several Caribbean countries, mostly countries that had been formerly part of the British Empire, but it is now going beyond that. So we live at a time when there are changes in our borders. And I will say just a few words about that later. But let me tell you about Trinidad and Tobago in a nutshell. It is an economy that has been quite buoyant and has exhibited a significant level of growth within recent times. And the main pillar of that growth has to do with our supplies of gas and petroleum. Being part of the hydrocarbon economy in the Caribbean with our neighbor Venezuela, 
we've been able to develop a modern, dynamic, technologically competitive, and globally stable energy sector. To some extent, we consider that to be a major public policy trust over the last 30 years or more. And it is that has given us opportunities to provide, not only to here in Spain, but to many parts of the world, some of our liquefied natural gas. And some of your own companies have been engaged in different ways in this particular venture. So the commercial relationship between Spain and Trinidad and Tobago was cemented within modern times in the energy field. And we appreciate the work that has been done and the investment that has come onto our shores and the export markets that we've been able to penetrate by establishing a vibrant, internationally competitive gas-based economy. But we have done that in the context of creating an environment for supporting business ventures. And over the last number of years, in this deep diplomatic relationship that we have shared together, we are able to put together cooperation agreements for the protection and pre protection and, and protection and of if investments and indeed double taxation treaties. So not only have we developed what by today's standard to be an, a framework for encouraging foreign investment and protecting and providing the safeguards in the field of taxation, we are seen really as a place in which there is no obstacle to the question of the movement of capital. And we are very proud of that in terms of how it is articulated in our exchange policy, foreign exchange policy and in other aspects of our public life. But this is done in Trinidad and Tobago within the context of our partnership with the Caribbean region. And the Caribbean region includes all the countries, now 15 of them, in the region, stretching all the way from Belize in the north to Suriname in the south. And it's a formidable group of countries of mainland South America and the Caribbean Sea. And it is in that context I said I wanted to share a few thoughts with you on the agenda ahead of us. For as we look forward now to the future, we recognize that the world in which we live is in new forms of convergence. Whether it is convergence, as you are now a member of the Pacific Alliance, and we are considering joining the Pacific Alliance, or whether it's a convergence in terms of the model of the ASEAN communities, we too have recognized that we must go beyond even the boundaries of the Caribbean community. For the Caribbean Sea economy has rich material, resource material, both onshore and offshore. And it is in that context we have begun an earnest conversation on the issue of a wider Caribbean convergence that will transform our markets from a relatively small size to a much larger market in the vicinity of between 30 and 40 million people. And therefore, when we view the Caribbean, we view it now in the context of a larger economic space. It will be some time when there will be many obstacles that will be in our way to create the institutions to support the Caribbean economic convergence. But it is clear now that that's the direction and the pathway that we shall go. And therefore it is in that context that I believe the timing of trying to renew our relationship here is indeed an important one. For some reason, we have found ourselves at the center of the diplomatic space in the region. 
That diplomatic space was recently ventilated by the visit of the President of China, Mr. Jinping, who gave us the honor recently to visit Trinidad and Tobago, which is a small country, as the first stop in the Western Hemisphere, and in so established a new presence of another one of the major countries in the world ahead of us. That, of course, was followed at the same time by a visit in this year by the Vice President of the United States of America, Joe Biden, as he, him too, came to establish the pivotal role that Trinidad and Tobago is playing and will play in the future in the context of the diplomatic space in which we operate. There are many others who have come. And as Foreign Minister, I was quite pleased to see the attraction and the magnetic possibilities of Trinidad and Tobago becoming a center for the conduct of diplomacy. Whether it is at the level of politics or it is at the level of economy, we are sensing that that is so. And that is why very recently, the government of Trinidad and Tobago took the decision to work with the University of the West Indies to establish what for now we are referring to as a global center for Caribbean diplomacy. We hope that we'll be able to work with you in your own diplomatic academy and with your scholars in an exchange of professionals in that field. And during the course of 2014, we expect, therefore, to take a step to give vent to a new diplomatic space in the region by so doing. It is therefore in that context that we believe that investment opportunities, and I was told that there are a number of possible investors or people who are interested in the economic life of Trinidad and Tobago who may be here today. And I just want to point out, and we will of course distribute a speaking notes document with far more details. But just to point out that there are a couple of areas in which we believe remain largely unexplored, but there are natural synergies between Spain and Trinidad and Tobago. One has to do with the question of heritage and tourism. For as I mentioned earlier, our heritage is a common heritage. And today's world, we expect that that can indeed be coupled with new products in the field of tourism in order to enhance our people-to-people -people relationship and so support the efforts, not only of Trinidad and Tobago, but indeed the wider Caribbean. The other area in which we've been given a lot of focus has to do with what I call the creative industry. And by the creative industries, we go beyond what has been called creative industries of the past. For now, we are bringing together the concept of innovation, sometimes referred to as imagination, <coughs> with the concept of infrastructure at the level of communication, and also the concept of information. So that combination, hopefully, will go beyond the current boundaries and the current borders of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean in searching for new investment opportunities in the world of the creative industries. And it is in that context that I believe we will be searching for new space not only new space in the region, but new space in the economy itself. And at this stage, being a region that may well be at the takeoff, so to me, in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, this opportunity for developing opportunities in the creative industry mm -hmm. remains an important one. 
And finally, our occasional advantage. Apart from the traditional advantages that do exist in Trinidad and Tobago as a stable democracy, with working institutions, in a system in which there is a deep commitment to all the values of democracy and rights, one in which the movement of capital remains an important one for us. We believe the important locational advantages of Trinidad and Tobago being at the top of Latin America, South America, just below the United States of America, to develop a new axis between our country and Spain. Spain, of course, has been a country that is now well within the European community and, of course, have shared some of the challenges of that particular integration movement. But at the same time, you are well positioned, not only in the context of Europe, but as I was told so well this morning by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, your relationship with North Africa is one that has been growing and deepening on your part. I say that because in our own quest in Trinidad and Tobago to work for a new relationship with Africa, we have been focusing on the new found energy wealth of the African continent. And we are engaged in many activities in many parts of Africa in providing support to the energy, nascent energy industries. And we see, therefore, that as an area of natural cooperation, especially since Spain, in its own diplomatic endeavors and commercial relationships, have been working closely with North Africa. Of course, we under, underlining all these developments is the issue of financial services and energy relations. And I won't say too much more on that at this point. Let me end these brief remarks by making reference to the agenda between Trinidad and Tobago and Europe in general. And of course, Spain, Trinidad and Tobago in particular. We expect during the course of this year to have a Spain, European, uh, Car Caribbean Community Joint Commission meeting in Georgetown, and perhaps to be preceded by a meeting of the energy sectors of our two countries in order to be able to develop what we hope will be a new collaboration in that field between our respective places. We are very much aware of the issues that are surrounding the EPA, and we have been negotiating with you and others to ensure that we do not find ourselves at a disadvantage position in the new articulation of the policy dimensions of the EPA. The European Investment Facility is something we welcome. And this morning, I read of the agreement of the WTO, in which it was pointed out that they will establish a trade facilitation committee in which the European Union will be providing significant financial support. These are all important windows that will now create new opportunities. The good thing about these windows, as opposed to those in the past, is it's taking into consideration the new realities. For a long time, it was felt that the Caribbean economies were vulnerable, and indeed they are. Vulnerable in many different ways, small being one. But in today's world, size has become less of a hindrance. And that vulnerability has been addressed by global institutions, including the World Bank and the IMF, on the precept that shocks and external shocks are temporary phenomena, that they will come and they will go, and we can interject by providing support on a temporary basis. The truth is, Caribbean economies 
have always been negotiating with Sharks, from the Spanish time, through the British time, and through the now independence time. Sharks and external Sharks is a permanent feature of Caribbean economy. And therefore, the institutions that must be put into place to address that has to be quite different. So I welcome the tendency on the part of the European Union to try and put into place new windows of cooperation. And we hope to have an earnest policy dialogue at the level of the European Union and the Caribbean countries in the context of the ACP relationship to, decide, to design those new windows of support. It is in that context, therefore, that we look forward to deepen our relationship with the European Union at this time and at this turn in your own juncture. But the European Union have seen the limits of traditional orthodox integration and themselves have been engaged in many adventures to try and give solidity to the future. Part of that solidity is based on the fact that you're moving beyond and creating new convergence mechanisms, so too are we in the Caribbean. These, therefore, are my comments here today to you, this very distinguished audience, to share with you a vision of that future on the basis of how we can co collaborate and cooperate in different spheres. And I hope that this will interest you to keep an interest on Trinidad and Tobago, on the region, on a part of the world that sometimes remain a hidden part of the world, but a part of the world that is increasing in its geopolitical significance, not only in the Western Hemisphere, but in the global arena. And I end by saying that we want to at least take the first step in deepening further our relationship between Spain and Trinidad and Tobago and beyond sharing of ambassadors, of which we have had the privilege in the past to have had a distinguished set of persons holding that position, beyond that relationship, which has been there since 1967, I'm told, so it's not new. It is a long-standing commitment on your part and our part to work together, and we have indeed worked together on many fronts. I'm hoping that we can secure in the not-too-distant future a nominee for the establishment of our honorary council here in Madrid so that we can have a person who will be able to give vent to the desires on our part and on your part. And I say this to you if only to interest anyone who may have such an interest, who may have or know of anyone, to pass it through our channels, for we want to do that rather quickly as a first step in deepening this relationship as we build on the agenda, which I intend to do over the next day here, and already we started this morning with the most intriguing and in-depth analysis which the Minister of Foreign Affairs on many aspects of that agenda. Today, therefore, I am very pleased and privileged to be the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And as I was told by you, Your Excellency, the first Minister of Foreign Affairs to make an official visit to Spain, although we have met so often in so many places and so many different times, whether it's in New York or in Trinidad and Tobago. And you yourself have provided us with the honor of your king and queen visiting us not too long ago, and your prime minister at some time before. And our own prime minister of the previous administration did visit you. So this might be the first visit of the foreign minister but let me assure you, the visits that have taken place were at a much higher level. And therefore, it tells you that the relationship has always been seen one that perhaps has great expectations, but somewhat elusive. And today, I'm hoping that we can establish a new strategic direction to this relationship in identifying how we can work together in this changing world. I want to invite you to take an interest and to share with us your interests in the world of commerce, in the world of politics, and in the world of diplomacy. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, for your words. Uh, really has been a, a, a 
very enlightening presentation. And now, if you allow me, I just would like to welcome your intention of establishing an honorary consul here in Madrid. Uh, we hope it's the first step in the process of establishing a full embassy in the future. And of course, we can count on all our cooperation uh, in all.